Okay, so on with paper two. Paper two starts off with some binary and hexadecimal. So let's have a look at this one. Binary number, eight bit number, convert the bit pattern shown in figure one into decimal. As we remember, working from the right, each bit is worth a different value in decimal. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So working out from here, we've got a one under the four, a one under the eight, a one under the 16, and a one under the 128. So this number is worth 128 plus 16 plus eight plus four. Four plus eight is 12, 12 plus 16, is 28, 28 plus 128 equals 156. One mark. Now convert the bit pattern shown in figure one into hexadecimal. You should show your working. Now you'll actually get both marks if you get this correct, but if you show your working and you don't get it right, at least you'll get something. So to turn the number into a hexadecimal value, we write it down but we write it down as two groups of four bits, a nibble. And we convert each of those into its own independent number. Let's start on the left. So remembering one, two, four, eight. And this time we've got a one under the one and a one under the eight. So this is worth eight plus one, which is nine. Now this one here, we do one, two, four, eight, a one under the four, a one under the eight. Now four and eight makes 12, but remember in hexadecimal, we don't uh, write down 12. Remember we've got nine, then we have A, which is 10, B, which is 11, and C, which is 12. So 12 is C in hexadecimal. So the correct answer, is 9C. And again we can check this because remember in hexadecimal this is your uh, units figure, this is your 16s figure, so we know that 9C is 9 lots of 16 plus C which is 12, so 9 times 16, 144, plus 12, 156, which is what we worked out before. Little check just to make sure we're on the right track. Adding together the following three binary numbers. Now again, you can cheat with this by just working out what they are in uh, decimal, adding them together and then working it back again. Uh, if you uh, get it wrong, then you're going to be in trouble because you won't have any working to show. Let's work it through the proper way. So 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2. Now 2 in binary, remember, is 1, 0. So we put down a 0, carry the 1. Let's just remind ourselves over here that one zero is two and one one is three. Just to remind us when we're going along. Zero zero plus zero is obviously zero plus the one gives us a one. One plus one plus zero is two. Two is one zero, so we'll put down the zero and carry a one. Zero plus zero plus zero plus one at the bottom is one. One plus zero plus one is two, so we put down the zero, carry the one. One plus one plus zero plus one is three. Three is one one, so we put down one, carry the one. One plus zero plus zero plus one is two, so we put down the zero, carry the one. Zero plus zero plus zero plus one is one. And at the end, if we've got a little bit of time, we can just check by working out what the decimal numbers are, add them together and prove that they work out the same as the result there. And so we continue. Put the following capacities into size order where one is the smallest and four is the largest. Well, let's have a look at these. So terabytes, gigabytes, megabytes, kilobytes. So 
we know let's turn them all into the same kind of thing so um, we know that megabytes a uh, thousand gigabytes is a megabyte so 6250 megabytes is 6.25 gigabytes okay so that one is bigger than that one 3500 kilobytes is 3.5 megabytes and obviously that's vastly smaller than these two now half a terabyte 0 0.5 a terabyte is a thousand gigabytes so half of a thousand gigabytes must make that 500 gigabytes so let's have a look at what we've got so that's obviously clearly the biggest so four is the biggest this one clearly is the smallest so that's the smallest this one is bigger than this one so this one is the next smallest number two and the next number three so smallest 3.5 megabytes next 2.5 gigabytes next 6250 megabytes which is 6.25 gigabytes and then biggest of all half a terabyte which is 500 gigabytes figure 2 shows an 8x8 black and white bitmap image the image has been represented as a bit pattern with each bit representing a pixel row 3 has been represented as 01011010 and if we look at row 3 you'll see that the first one is black so the 0 is representing black then white, then black, two whites, then a black, then a white, then a black. So black is zero, white is one. What is the binary representation of row four? Well, let's have a look. So row four starts with a black, which we know is zero. The next two pixels are white, which we know are ones. Two blacks, two whites. And a black. Finished. The image in figure two is going to be changed so that each pixel can be any one of 16 different colors. At the moment they're just black and white so we only need one bit to represent each color. What is the minimum number of bits that would be needed to represent the entire 16 color image? You should show your working. So first of all the question is how many bits do we need for each, each pixel. Well we need 16 colors so for 16 colors we need four bits. Remember it's 2 to the power of whatever 2 to the power of 4 equals 16. So 16 colors requires four bits. Two colors requires one bit, four colors requires two bits, eight colors requires three bits, 16 colors requires four bits. So the first calculation we need is that there are four bits for each pixel. Now the next question is, how many pixels are there? Well, it's eight bits that way, like eight pixels that way. So the size of the image is eight by eight, which is 64 pixels. Each of those pixels needs four bits. So 64, times 4, 256 bits is the correct answer.